Today we're driving a 2022 Mercedes-Benz S500. This is powered by a three liter turbocharged inline six. It makes 429 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque. It has a nine-speed automatic transmission. It's all-wheel drive. It has rear wheel steering. Starting price on this is about $112,000. As tested, we're at 128 grand with a few options. This has the 20 inch AMG wheels. Um, we've got a nautical blue painted exterior, which looks absolutely stunning in my opinion. Liking the looks of this S500. I spent quite a bit of time in it this week. Let's walk you around it, show you what it looks like inside and out, and then we'll take it for a drive and give you guys some driving impressions. We have these flush mounted door handles. They should either open on their own or open with a light tap. Soft closed doors. Starting up this S500 is completely seamless. No starter noise because of the EQ Boost mild hybrid system. Listen to that, very nice. So we have some really interesting new tech in this new S-Class for 2022. A lot of touch screens, a lot of touch controls. We have different profiles that you can load with the touch of your finger. It'll sense your fingerprint, whether it's you or your spouse or another driver, and it will customize all the controls to each individual, which is very cool. We have a new center stack layout with this touch screen. I actually quite like this touchscreen. Everything seems to be pretty well organized. It's reasonably responsive. It has haptic touch, a little bit of audio feedback too whenever you touch and make a selection. It'll also sense wherever your hand is pointing or about to go, and it will enlarge or illuminate different areas of the screen so it's a little bit easier to make your selection, which is nice. Only con, a lot of fingerprints, and a lot of your controls are in this touchscreen. There are very few physical controls for a lot of commonly used functions in this S-Class. Though you can organize a lot of your favorites in this favorite menu, you can make selections here with a number of different settings in comfort, navigation, radio, seat settings, massage, stuff like that, and add those to your favorite menu, which I do appreciate. You do get a constant back and home button and constant climate controls for temperature adjustments, fan speed, and then you can select a climate menu if you wanna go more in depth. All of your seating controls over here on the door panel, just like we've always had in Mercedes products. We have ventilated and heated seats, three memory settings, and of course, lots of massaging too. We get a rear privacy screen and two rear seat privacy shades, which are both very nice. Two sunroofs. We'll lower those screens just so we get a little bit better light in the interior. And I love this brown leather interior. I think it looks really sharp. Of course, we also have ambient lighting, very neat looking vents up here at the top of the dashboard. You can control how much air is coming out of the vents with these little buttons right here. Down here in the center console, we get a little bit of storage for a couple of cups and our mobile devices. We have a wireless charging pad down here, a couple USB-C ports that can open and close with a press of a button, and then more storage right here in the center console. Nicely sized glove box with a little perfume bottle on there that will mist air uh, that smells very nice out into the cabin every time you start up the vehicle. On the steering wheel, we have all of these touch controls. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the steering wheel and its controls. You get used to it. It does take some time, but the buttons, everything, they just all kind of feel kind of cheap. Not that much more special than a Volkswagen Golf, for example, with a similar set of steering wheel controls. I don't even think they really have haptic feedback. It's just kind of a, a whole button that presses in. You do get some redundancy on the right side of the steering wheel where you can control your uh, big tablet screen here. You can have home button, back button, control your volume. There is no volume knob, though you do get these touch buttons right here. Um, it works. There are also some controls down here to select your drive mode. You have an individual mode, sport, sport plus, comfort, and eco. And then there's also a setting here to turn on all of your safety systems, head-up display, 3D driver display. You can raise the level of the suspension. This rides on air suspension. Easily turn on and off your lane keep assist. There's also a swipe down menu, or you can press this little star on the steering wheel that will take you to your favorites menu, and you can add functions however many you like in a number of different menus here, which is very useful. You also get quick access controls to Apple CarPlay, 
and the ability to turn on and off your 3D gauge cluster with this menu button right here. I think the 3D gauge cluster is the coolest feature in this new S-Class. Unfortunately, it's not something that you're gonna be able to see through camera because it takes two images, merges them together, and has eye tracking cameras that track the position of your head and eyes to create this 3D image. So on camera, it might look a little funky. We're just gonna turn that off, but take my word for it, in person, in real life, it's a very neat feature. You go into some of the menus, the different gauge layouts, navigation. It's a very interesting and uh, kind of a trippy appearance to this center digital display. You have a bunch of different menus here and gauges that you can see from understated and minimal to performance oriented. We're just gonna leave it on the classic gauge display. You can see your mileage, your GPS, attention assist, fuel consumption, Speaking of which is quite impressive in this S500. It's rated for 30 miles to the gallon on the highway and I believe 21 in the city for a 24 MPG combined rating. There's a lot to talk about with this interior, a lot of features. We're not gonna cover everything, but I've gotta say overall, I think the integration of all the tech and new stuff in here is done pretty well. However, it does detract a little bit from the driving experience and the luxurious element of this S-Class. There is just a whole lot going on all the time. Some of the safety systems work not as well as I was hoping for, and it's all just a little bit too distracting. I think the more you live with this car, the more you use it, the more you would get used to these functions and features, but initially it's a bit overwhelming and I think it kind of takes away from the luxurious nature of this S-Class. I think there's a delicate balance with this integration of technology and car companies are still kind of experimenting with and pushing the boundaries and limits of what is acceptable to put into a car, how many screens we have. Uh, we also have this really neat augmented reality head-up display, which we'll show you guys later on on the drive. It's a neat feature, it's a little bit gimmicky, but in practice it seems to work pretty well. Uh, again, the S-Class has always been this car that really kind of is on the forefront of tech and design and will kind of show the future of automobiles. You'll see a lot of these features, I'm sure, trickle down to $30,000 cars here in another five years or so. Um, so Mercedes is definitely pushing the envelope and pushing the boundaries of what's possible with the current tech in this new S-Class, and I appreciate that. I'm just questioning some of the integration and if it's actually adding to the experience as opposed to detracting from it. Let's walk you around the exterior a little bit, show you what it looks like. And of course, we've got to check out the back seats. I really like the looks of this new S-Class. The exterior is quite understated, very classy. If the interior is a little bit bold, brash, and you know, pretty wild looking, especially at night with the ambient lighting, the exterior is pretty classy, pretty classic looking. I think uh, painted in this nautical blue, this is one of the best color combinations you can spec. These AMG 20 inch wheels look pretty good too. And uh, these headlamps are fantastic. Let's take a look in the back seat. Tons of space back here. Plenty of room to stretch out. Seated behind myself at five foot 10. I can pretty much completely extend my legs. We have controls for our rear sun shades and sunroof, which is really nice on both sides, driver and rear passenger sides. This S-Class has the bench seat arrangement. So we get a center console here with a little bit of storage space and it uh, looks like a place to put your mobile device. No rear climate control, which is a bit of a surprise and a disappointment for the price, though we do get a couple USB-C ports back here and a 115 volt plug outlet. We also can control the vent speed of our air back here too. We get a couple seat back pockets to put items and it looks like maybe this is some type of an ashtray. Interesting, very stylish. Pretty well integrated in the door there. Very comfortable back seat, very luxurious, as you would expect in the S-Class. Looks like we can't seem to get away from the landscapers, so we'll show you the trunk and then we'll head out onto the road. Plenty of trunk space in the back of this car. Lots of room for cargo, luggage, 
even a little bit more storage down there. Unfortunately, no spare tire. You can close the trunk with a press of a button or lock the whole vehicle right there. Okay. I think that's a pretty good walk around for now. We could spend a lot more time showing you the rest of the features in this S500. But for now, let's take this out and show you what it's like on the road. Column mounted shifter, putting us into reverse. We've got a pretty nice reverse camera. Great visibility all around. Lightweight steering and a very quiet powertrain. Brake pedal's a little bit soft in this S500. We get four and a half degrees of rear wheel steering in this car. It's subtle, you barely notice it, honestly, at speed. It definitely helps with high speed handling and low speed agility, as well as the turning radius. six even sounds decent. It's very quiet. I think honestly if you care about the powertrain and engine in your S-Class you're probably you know, going to want to swing for the S580 with the V8. That would be my powertrain of choice. That said though this inline six with a mild hybrid system is pretty good. It's very quiet, very smooth. It definitely feels like it belongs in this car. We do get the occasional rough shift or rough start from this nine-speed automatic. I'm not super impressed with this transmission. It's just okay, it's good enough, but it's not amazing. I think uh, for the price, Mercedes could have smoothed this out just a little bit better. Also, I'm probably spoiled. We did spend the whole week in a Rolls-Royce Cullinan, and if there's one way to make a $100,000 S-Class feel on the cheaper side, it's to drive a Rolls-Royce. <laughs> Let's put us into Sport Plus and hit this entrance ramp. Pretty awesome grip from this S500. A little bit of intervention there from traction control. And still, that three liter inline six stays completely silent, even at wide open throttle. On the highway, let's enable some of our driving assistance systems. Cruise control. We have adaptive cruise control and steering assist. Both seem to work pretty well. Adaptive cruise control is quite conservative in comfort mode. <laughs> nice M5. But in sport mode, it seems to work a little bit better. It's a little bit more responsive and uh, willing to make passes at a, at a better speed. I don't feel like I'm holding up traffic as much. It also has automatic lane changing assist. And you can see here in the head up display that it'll show you what it's doing. A very cool system. You can even adjust your following distance to vehicles in front of you and it'll track the location of the vehicle in the head up display and show you basically what's going on. You can quickly change five mile an hour increments with the press of a button here. Sometimes I've found these touch controls to work a little bit inconsistently, so you have to kind of get used to it. All of your inputs on the steering wheel have to be very deliberate, and you kind of have to look down every time to see what you're doing because there isn't a lot of differentiation between the buttons. That said though, at speed, very quiet, very comfortable. The air suspension rides awesome. Um, a really nice car to spend time in. My only complaint, and this is a big one, is with cruise control off, with active steering off, you're constantly getting this message to put your hands on the steering wheel, even if your hand is on the steering wheel. BMW has sensors built into the wheel, which work really well. Mercedes, you always have to be 
applying constant torque to the wheel, otherwise it's going to be prompting you to put your hands back on the wheel. It's kind of annoying. If you're on a very straight section of road, and whether cruise control is engaged or not, even if all the systems are turned off, it's still going to prompt you to put your hands back on the wheel, and it's annoying. Over the course of a 400 mile trip, it probably came on about 200 times. It was constant. It seems to come on more often when you're looking at a screen or looking in your rearview mirror or looking away, maybe down at the gauge cluster here. Um, so anyway, something to note there. If you don't touch the steering wheel for long enough, it'll beep at you and then it'll go into a, kind of an emergency braking uh, panic mode where it'll actually stop the car, turn the flashers on, and that's a little bit scary because it's kind of hard to disengage once, it, once it's active. We'll show you here, we're approaching this M5 again, and you can see the following distance that we've set in front of us. It'll track his location, which I think is pretty cool. And we can change that following distance and it does a pretty good job maintaining distance from the vehicles in front of us. We'll even bring it to a complete stop here at this traffic light. This augmented reality head-up display is next level stuff. Very neat, very well done, very well integrated in this S500. When we drove the S580, I was really impressed with the performance of that car. It was really just the whole package, the handling, the engine, the suspension. I'm not as impressed with the performance from this S500. I think the engine definitely takes away a little bit of that wow factor. And it's not as smooth of a pairing with this nine-speed automatic. Still though, it's a nice powertrain, and I think for what you're getting, it does the job well enough. Just for an extra 10 or 15 grand, I'd probably swing for the S580. <laughs> In eco mode, you get this beautiful coast function that will completely turn the engine off You'll go to zero RPMs, and you'll just coast forever, and that'll save a lot of fuel. If you get heavy into the brakes, or if you need to accelerate, the engine comes back on seamlessly and immediately without any hesitation. The differences between drive modes are subtle. Throttle response, ride quality, steering weight and feel, suspension tuning. If I had one complaint about this S500 dynamically, it would be the brakes. The pedal is just a little bit too soft and mushy for my taste, and uh, there isn't a lot of bite when you get into it hard. Also, there are some rougher shifts from this 9-speed G-Tronic automatic. Stability control doing a nice job keeping us reined in there. see here following some traffic at the closest following distance it's still a little bit conservative in its uh, 
distance control. But that said, it seems to work well enough. It's not the most impressive adaptive cruise control system that I've driven. And honestly, for being in an S-Class, it is a bit of a disappointment. The lane centering, though, seems to work great. It's very smooth. This is a system that I would just leave on pretty much all the time. You can easily turn it all off if you want to, but I've mostly been leaving it on this week, and it seems to do a pretty good job. I'll show you here what it's like accelerating around slower traffic. Again, kind of a rough shift there from the 9-speed auto. Seems to get back up to speed pretty well. And then we will put our turn signal on and make a lane change to the right. Look at that. And then there's our pesky put your hands on the steering wheel message again. All right, while we're cruising here, let's just do a quick test of this Bua Mesta 3D surround sound system. Again, no volume knob, so we've got to use our steering wheel controls or our control down there. Guys, well, Watch out. Object on road ahead. how can we sum up this new 2022 Mercedes-Benz S580? Well, a little bit of a mixed bag. There's some things about this car that I really, really like. There are just some amazing new uh, integrations of technology that really kind of show and pave the way for future luxury vehicles and future uh, tech that we may see in vehicles in the next five to ten years. I love this head-up display and the augmented reality. I think it's a very, very cool system. Pretty unique in the automotive space right now, too. The 3D gauge cluster is awesome, but again, you can only experience that in person. The rest of this package comes together pretty nicely, but there are also some things about this S500 that I found really frustrating this week. And uh, this does have a learning curve. This car is a bit of a chore to learn how to drive and learn how to use. And there is just a lot going on here at any given time. It's distracting. It's a little bit tedious to operate, and I think that detracts some from the luxury driving experience of this Mercedes S-Class. Unfortunately, there are some features in here that are very annoying, <laughs> mostly safety systems, and I hope that Mercedes tweaks and adjusts those with time and improves how those systems are integrated in the driving experience. I would still swing for the S580 if you uh, really do want a more special powertrain. This 3 liter inline 6 is great, but it's a little bit dull, it's a little bit humdrum, it's a little bit normal and pedestrian, and I feel like if I were spending over $110,000, $120,000 on my Mercedes S-Class, I'd want something just a little bit more special. So anyway, that's how I'm going to sum up this car for me this week. 
Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. We appreciate all the uh, support recently. We will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Oh, and also, here's what the key looks like. How cool is that? Absolutely gorgeous.